Um, I saw an op-ed you wrote just recently in which you used the phrase with a couple of colleagues, you used the phrase that Ferguson and St. Louis are on the precipice of pandemonium. I'm curious what you expect to see if the grand jury, as many people expect, come back and don't have an indictment in the Michael Brown case. Well, uh, uh, what I think we will see uh, is a group of uh, young people who've been organizing uh, who've actually gone through the kind of training that many of us went through back in the 1960s and 70s uh, to, to participate with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in nonviolent direct action. Uh, now, having said that, uh, the last, uh, this past summer, when we had all of the tumult, uh, we also had an influx of people coming in uh, from Los Angeles, and we had a, uh, gang members coming in from Chicago. I think that they are committed to doing some damage uh, to uh, Ferguson and to the image of uh, the community and, and, and actually the, the entire nation. Uh, we have white and black, uh, I think, fringe groups that would like to see uh, Ferguson explode. But I think that the overwhelming majority of the people who live in Ferguson and the young people who uh, just a couple of weeks ago flew to Washington on their own dime to meet with me, uh, they're interested in trying to send a message uh, that they don't like what happened uh, and they intend to take some other courses of action. Violence will not be one of them. Co Congressman, I, last night Governor Nixon was asked in a press conference whether uh, the buck stopped with him. And he sort of stumbled over that question, had a kind of a hard time answering it. I'm curious whether you have full confidence in the governor's ability to deal with whatever unfolds here uh, over the next few days. Well, I, I think the governor is trying desperately hard to do the right things and not to overdo anything and not to, uh, to, to make predictions that, uh, that may fall flat. Uh, but I, I think that he is on board. He's listening to uh, law enforcement folk from uh, the state uh, highway patrol, which I think is a good thing. Uh, and, and I'm not sure that all of this should fall on the governor. I think he's doing his part. Look, we have, the, we have a mayor uh, in Ferguson. I was the mayor in Kansas City, Missouri, our state's largest city, for uh, two terms. And uh, when we were on the precipice of, of disaster after the Rodney King decision, uh, it was my responsibility to try to, to uh, uh, dissolve all of the friction that was out on the streets. So uh, I don't think people are, are uh, taking into account that Ferguson has an elected mayor. And that mayor should not be standing behind uh, the governor, hoping that the governor will take all of the, the blame uh, if things go awry. The mayor has to have some responsibility. Right. Uh, fair enough. Um, I'm curious, though, whether you think that the emergency declaration and uh, the National Guard being called in in this situation, do you think that is a smart move? Do you think that that brings, creates a, an environment of calm and confidence, or do you think it escalates tension here? Well, I'm ambivalent about it. Uh, I think the governor did what he thought was the right thing to do. I think we always have to be careful that we don't um, send a message that would suggest that uh, we expect these people to fall uh, to the lowest level of expectation. And since the summer, uh, you know, I think many people have all have spent most of their time talking about the horrors of what. Uh, could happen after the, the grand jury returns a decision not to indict. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't think we ought to just say it's going to be so bad that everybody goes, uh, that everybody ex expects an explosion. And, and uh, so some, in some ways that's what the calling out of the, the National Guard would suggest. However, if the governor did not do that and we had problems, uh, there would be a chorus of people, including politicians, who would be uh, denouncing him for not being ready for a disaster when we knew that something w would happen when that decision was rendered. Congressman, we only have about a minute left, and I want to get two more questions in, so relatively sure. quickly. Um, Congressman Lewis, your, your colleague Congressman Lewis, uh, in an interview today, talked about how if there was not an indictment in this case, there would be uh, not massive nonviolent protests all over the country, uh, in say, something like uh, echoing the Selma marches back in the 1960s. Do you think that's likely to happen, and do you think if it did happen, it would be a good or bad thing? I think in some places it's going to be good. For example, uh, you're going to find that uh, Congressman Lacey Clay and I from Missouri uh, are going to try to bring out uh, maybe as many as 20, 25 
members of the Congressional Black Caucus to help do voter registration. The, re the revenge that I think we ought to exact uh, is to use the 70 percent African-American population there to put people in office, not all of whom will probably be black, uh, but people who would respond to their needs and I think could, could squash uh, a lot of the talk of, of explosion. Uh, Congressman, real, real quick, um, the White House invest the White House uh, review of the question of militarization in the police. I know this is an issue that you care a lot about. Do you have any sense of where that stands? No, uh, Congressman Clay and I met with the Secretary of Defense uh, over at the Pentagon. Uh, he uh, made some recommendations to the White House. It's now over at the White House. We hope that we can get some response. Uh, we will be meeting uh, Congressman Clay and I with uh, over at the White House tomorrow. I think with Valerie Jarrett, uh, when, and we will raise this issue because we think that. It would be a good time to make an announcement before the grand jury uh, filed its report, if in fact that uh, can be done. Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, thank you very much for taking time. I'm going to turn now to Joe Manis, the political reporter for St. Louis Public Radio. Joe, you've covered this state and this city for a really long time. Yes. What do you expect to see happen here in St. Louis and in Ferguson if, in fact, again, as many people expect, that there uh, is no indictment that comes out in this case? What are we going to see here on the streets in the, in the, in the subsequent 48 or 72 or hours or even longer? Well, I think there's definitely going to be protests. The only issue is how big they are and how boisterous they get. I think there's people on both sides who um, are assuming that there's going to be a, a sizable number of people who are upset with the decision to take to the streets. But as Congressman uh, Cleaver pointed out, there is some pressure to try to keep it nonviolent. There was some nights of uh, violent looting this summer, which some believe actually hurt the cause. Right. So there is an effort to try to tamp down emotions and keep it directed towards the protests. If you think back to what happened in the summer, there were a couple different things that happened, right? One was the actual incident, the facts of which are not broadly known to many people, except for maybe the people inside that grand jury. Um, another thing that happened was the response to, the, to the, the protests and slash riots that took place. What do you think that the government, the city government, state government, all elected officials and, and law enforcement here, what did people learn from that that will, might be applied to how they're going to handle what happens now? Well, I think in some cases, this this is why the governor is acting the way he did. The governor came into a lot of fire this summer because he waited several days before he got involved at all. And uh, once things seemed to get out of hand, then he called in the National Guard, called in the Highway Patrol. Um, some thought he kind of answered the protests with maybe too much power, but the, he, I think now, wants to make sure he doesn't replicate the criticisms he came under this summer for waiting too long. Right. The St. Louis County Police, on the other hand, um, as your viewers may know, Ferguson has its own police department. It does. And there's the St. Louis County Police Department, but they have to be asked to come into Ferguson. Right. And, but they, under the governor's emergency powers, will be taking the lead role. Now, this summer, the county police came under fire for being a little too militant, uh, you know, with tanks and tear gas and all that. So the county police are trying to tamp down that image. But so you've got a lot of people who are trying to take some of the lessons they learned from the summer to maybe perform differently this fall. But no one's real sure. I mean, the weather is going to impact it. Right. It's colder than usual in right. St. Louis, and Very, that could yes, affect it. Yes, it certainly is cold. Yes. Um, let me ask you real quick on two things. One, what, what, what do you feel like the atmosphere is? Do so you feel like there's an atmosphere in the city right now of kind of expe expectation? Is, do you feel like it's tense right now? Are tense. people braced for the worst? Tense. I think it braced for the worst in some areas. We've uh, done stories about uh, big runs into gun stores, a lot of uh, people purchasing firearms because they're nervous. Right.